So it's been a while since I've filmed anything in the shop here. I think probably since August. I don't believe I've filmed anything. I have been working on some stuff here the last couple of months, but uh, I took some time off away from this for a while. And um, yeah, anyway, I'm getting back into things pretty much, pretty much uh, full time, all the time. <laughs> Again. Anyways, uh, I started working on these visors here. I guess a week or more ago, a couple weeks ago, yeah. Someone had asked me a while back if I'd be interested in making a couple, so I screwed around with a couple different designs, ended up um, coming up with this, and uh, yeah, so a few people wanted them, so that was great. I am going to make some more. Uh, I sold off all the ones that I had made, but I'm probably going to make some more today or tomorrow. So they'll be ready to go. But anyway, this video here is more about um, these bumpers that I made. This is a, another request I had. Uh, originally had put one of these bumpers, a very similar one on this truck, which is a to me a King Hauler chassis with a Bruder Mac granite cab. Um, I didn't do a lot of work to get this one really low down because I wanted kind of the more off-road heavy haul look. Anyway, getting back to the bumper, it was actually the original one that I had on here was a mistake from one of the Hayes trucks that I built from scratch and I uh, wasn't happy with it for there and it just so happened that it, it was sort of not too hard to make it fit onto this truck and it looked good and anyway, a couple of people have harassed me over the last couple of years about making these things and I always said no, but anyway, finally with the visor success, I thought, well, what the hell, maybe I'll try the bumpers out and uh, made four. To start with, I started on four, and and uh, before I got very far, had orders for several more. So I ended up making ten, which I don't think was enough. But anyhow, I've got them. The ten that I plan to make here are done now. Um, they're not polished. They're a brushed finish. I, I think with some work they could be polished. However, I kind of in my head they're a heavy haul truck. They'd probably most likely be painted anyway. These are welded, they're sheet metal, um, they're cut, welded together, so they're, uh, you know, they're not a big chunk of billet or anything that you can sand on forever before you're going to wear these corners out, so it is um, 63 thousandths thick, so it's not like it's super thin or anything, but I wouldn't want to get carried away for too long. So I've got all the bumpers made, they're as close as I can get them all to for uh, hand making everything. I think they turned out pretty good. I ended up making pins for all of them. These pins do come out. I don't know. That may end up getting lost. I was going to put chains on them all, but then I wasn't really sure where to fix the chain onto the truck or the bumper without it looking too gross. Clunky looking. These are 256 stainless bolts that are in here. I use small bolts to try and gain a little bit more of a scale effect. And what I've done on my own truck, which is what I'm thinking that everyone should do, is I've actually taken a stock King Hauler front bumper mount and I've trimmed off the actual mount of the bumper mount itself and left the cross member part of it so that you end up with a flat surface underneath and a flat surface on the face. And I only have, this is the only one of these that I have, so otherwise I would have chopped it up to show, but then I've made this aluminum bracket here manually machined all these things and they're drilled and tapped with the 256 holes to mount the bumper to them and then they're set up to have a three millimeter screw put in here so what you would theoretically do would be after the excess is trimmed off this original bumper mount you would then center this get the height that you want and then drill the two holes for the screws that are sunk in fasten that to the truck, then fasten the bumper to the whole assembly. I did it this way partly because obviously it was a little less work for me than machining a completely brand new cross member that may or may not interfere with depending on how guys have their servos set up and that for steering and shifting. But also uh, I kind of thought that this gives a, a little bit of variance for height. Probably somewhere around a quarter of an inch you can move this up or down maybe even a little more actually once the bracket is trimmed off 
I've got mine set up so that it's flush with the frame but I know some guys have actually sunk these cabs down lower and they've modified the front frame a little bit so this should in, th in my head anyway give you a flush mount that you can move up and down and if you have some sort of a different cross member put in there and it's flush it would it, this bracket idea would still work with that setup so hopefully that makes everybody happy um, I, obviously I can't sit here and make parts for every individual setup that people have so I'm just trying to do my best with a generic thing that will work another thing that's uh, going on here is I've, I've swept these bumpers back a lot they are close to the wheels these are super wides on stock rims but there's still clearance they don't rub no matter where the suspensions at they do clear however if you mount the bumper lower obviously it's going to push that towards the tire more because of the angle in the bumper so you may want to shim this out and I thought that that was another thing with making uh, use of the stock bracket and a flat bracket out of aluminum that you could just put shim washers behind that whether you made them out of flat flat styrene or you used uh, fender washers or whatever whatever you had or whatever it was to your liking you could adjust it out um, I thought that there was no way to bring the bumper back in tighter so I would do that part and then if anybody needs it further forward to gain clearance from their tires then it's easy to shim it out much more than it is to try and trim the frame back and all that so anyway it's kind of where I'm at with all this stuff I think they turned out okay that's why the cherries are hanging on the on the bulldog I had them on the bumper pin but I wanted to take them off but I, I think they turned out cherry so <laughs> hopefully everyone else likes them too that's uh, that wanted to buy them it's been fair bit of interest so we'll see we've got uh, as per usual with hand making all this stuff there ends up with being uh, a lot of hours and everything here so between manually milling and yesterday I hand tapped 60 of these holes that are like I say they're 260 or uh, 256 so yeah I hand tapped 60 of these yesterday the full uh, full thickness of this aluminum so that was a exercise for my right wrist <laughs> so anyways yeah that's kind of uh, that's kind of what's going on it's a bit of an update video I got a couple other videos here I've got a pup trailer over there that's built and sold that turned out really cool I want to do a video of that before it goes away here next week and uh, I have a king hauler dump box for sale as well that I need to post up a video of the visors uh, charging $25 US for these plus shipping they're not polished. I polished up my own just half-ass here. I don't have proper equipment to buff these things, so so the the ones that I've sold here so far have just been a brush finish. But they are they definitely could be sanded quite easily and polished if you have the desire or the equipment to do so. They do go onto the stock dowels. They're on the cab, and it could be moved around and glued if you're so inclined to have it up or down more. But this one just rests there. And the bumpers, uh, I've, I've got to figure out some shipping yet. But uh, I'm thinking, I'm thinking 105 US each for the bumpers, plus shipping. And like I say, I got to figure out the best method for shipping yet. I'm not uh, not too sure. I, I want to keep the packages as small as I can, but the, they can't go in an envelope like a lot of the other stuff I sell because of the curve. They'll just get bent and screwed up. So I need to actually box them or put them in a mailing tube or something. So. I'll get on with that here after I put the camera down and see what's going on and then uh, 10 of these will be available. Like I, say, I think all of them are spoken for if the guys are still uh, still on the hook for them. So I will be making more soon after I get some other stuff caught up. So anyway, thanks for watching. That's what's been happening here the last few days. Take it easy.